Hello and welcome back to another video. If it's your first time here, my name's Lee. Okay, so today I want to talk about are the European Union about to commit economic suicide? Now, the reason I say this, we've seen the sanctions that they've already imposed against Russia. And in other videos, I've discussed some of the effects this is already having on the EU economy. However, um, there's some news today in the Financial Times that they are now considering additional sanctions due to what they call um, atrocities committed by Russia in some towns surrounding Kiev. And although um, we've seen a lot of video and images from here, there is no direct proof that these atrocities were committed by Russia. Um, and what you've got to remember is whenever you've got a war going on, there'll be a huge amount of propaganda from each side. And I think this conflict probably more than any other time because social media plays such a big part of um, the media that people consume nowadays. And we've already seen um, propaganda that was produced where the, the, there was uh, about the bombing of a hospital and that's been debunked. Um, but if, if, if you look at the, the Western media, the Western media are taking a very, very pro-Ukrainian stance in this. And they, they're almost dismissing anything that's coming from media giving an alternative view. And it is very interesting that Liz Truss, the um, UK foreign minister, was very quick to tweet out. And this is what she tweeted. We must hold to account those responsible for the appalling acts committed by Russian troops in Bucha, Irpin and elsewhere in Ukraine. Putin's regime will not be allowed to cover up their involvement in these atrocities. Now, she's, she's tweeted this before there's been any concrete proof that Russia have actually done this. Now, in this area called, called Bucha that they're talking about, um, you know, th there's been a, a, a battle fought there for, for a number of days. And it could be that many of those people have been killed just in, you know, both sides have been heavily shelling that area for, for some time. And I just refer now to a tweet by um, Scott Ritter. Now, if you don't know who Scott Ritter is, he's a former United Nations weapons inspector and a Marine Corps intelligence officer. And he tweeted, um, Re Booker, at a time when Western public opinion is being shaped by an intense information warfare operation exclusively designed to paint Russia in a negative light, one would think objective observers would wait for the forensics before screaming guilty. Now, I think this is a very sensible tweet. Now, I highly doubt there will be an independent investigation or forensics, but I think the point he's trying to make is, is when you hear... Um, news or, or reports that are from the Ukrainian side, take those with a pinch of salt, just as much as you should take things with a pinch of salt information coming from the Russian side. You know, this is an information war as well as a, 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 a on the ground war. It's also a financial war. And I do intend to produce a video soon about the three wars that are actually going on here. Okay, I now want to refer to this article from the Financial Times, which discusses these additional sanctions that the EU are contemplating um, imposing against Russia. The title of the article is EU prepares more sanction against Russia after apparent atrocities near Kiev. Notice they use the word apparent in the title. Okay, so it starts. The EU is preparing to introduce more sanctions against Moscow after reports of atrocities emerged in the wake of Russia's military retreat from the outskirts of Kiev. Charles Michael, president of the European Council, said further sanctions were on their way in response to Russia's actions in Bucha. Shocked by haunting images of atrocities committed by Russian army in Kiev, liberated region, Michael says on Twitter on Sunday, Further EU sanctions and support are on their way. EU is assisting Ukraine and NGOs in gathering of necessary evidence for pursuit in international courts. Again, um, 
haunting images he's only referring to images that are coming from Ukraine media here and there's a lot of videos and images shared on social media which give a different narrative so it's important that you don't just believe one side of this story it then says eu ambassador expected to discuss the fresh rounds of measures on wednesday according to a diplomat with knowledge of the plans now previously we've had um sort of diplomats from the eu suggest that the sanctions are at max and I think the only sanctions left against Russia at this stage are sanctions on energy, which from what I understand and what I've discussed in previous videos are gonna hurt the EU even more. The article then goes on to say, images from Bucha were unbearable, French President Emmanuel Macron said on Twitter, expressing compassion to the hundreds of civilians cowardly, cowardly assassinated. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz described terrible and grisly scenes emerging from the town, mentioning roads littered with corpses. Uh, German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock vowed to intensify sanctions against Russia and provide even more support for the defence of Ukraine, while her French counterpart called for the strongest possible international economic pressure on Moscow. Estonian Prime Minister Kaja Kallas asked for a fifth round of strong EU sanctions as soon as possible. Future measures proposed by some member states include more individual sanctions, a ban on Russian ships using EU ports, more export restrictions and embargoes on energy supplies such as coal, oil or gas, long demanded by Ukraine but previously resisted by some major European economies. Calls for the sanctions to target Russian energy exports on which the EU heavily depends have grown louder. In Italy, one of the EU's countries most reliant on Russian gas, Enrico Letta, chief of the centre-left Democratic Party, a junior partner in Prime Minister Mario Draghi's National Unity Government, called for a full oil and gas Russian embargo. Buying Russian oil and gas was financing war crimes, said Lithuania's foreign minister. Now, this is all well and good, um, the EU calling for these embargoes on Russian energy. But the truth of the matter is the European Union cannot do without Russian energy. Many countries depend heavily on it. And in the video I did yesterday, I outlined how um, German industry are very heavily reliant on Russian energy and that you have some of the largest industry um, chiefs in Germany suggesting that if gas is rationed or if there's uh, uh, interruption to supplies of gas to Germany that it will be absolutely catastrophic for the German economy and you know the German economy has been the the sort of powerhouse to the whole European economy for many many years we also see um, the European Union have a record inflation and all any additional sanctions are going to cause is higher inflation still. They have a plan to um, source their energy from different parts of the world, but all that's going to do is drive up the price. You know, Europe are already paying 10 times higher for their energy than just a few years ago. And this has massive effects on the economy because that energy is not only used to produce goods it's also used to ship goods so this will feed through to inflation i doubt whether inflation is even yet being affected by the first round of european sanctions on russia and already they're talking about imposing a second round of sanctions the article then finishes by saying Russia's Ministry of Defense on Sunday denied accusations of murdering civilians in Bucha, describing the claims as a provocation. During the time this set settlement was under control of the Russian armed forces, not a single local resident suffered from any violent actions, it said in a statement, adding that photos and videos of atrocities are another production of the Kiev regime for the Western media. So what Russia is saying here is that no... Um, people in these areas were deliberately killed or executed and that much of this has been staged um, by the Ukrainian authorities 
to feed Western media propaganda. Now, I have no idea whether that is true or false, but what I can say is, is there are many, many videos on social media that are supporting Ukraine, and there are also many videos that are debunking um, these Western media narratives in support of Ukraine. So I think it's really important you take a lot of this um, information you see in with a pinch of salt, unless it comes from a respected independent source that can verify either whether it is true or false. Hope that's provided you with an update and some more information. It will be very interesting to see what happens when the European Union meets to discuss this on Wednesday. And of course, at that time, I will update you with the information that comes out of that meeting. Um, please get involved, leave your comments down below. And uh, as always, for now, take care.